So today we're going to talk about the stronghold of faith. The stronghold of faith. You say, what in the world is that? I've never seen that word. The stronghold of faith. Oh, you've seen it, you just didn't recognize it. Okay, let's go to Romans 4, verse um, 17. You know that this is about Abraham. We haven't really talked a whole lot about Abraham lately. And we have to talk. You can't talk about faith without talking about Abraham. He's the father of faith. Amen. And so here in Romans chapter 4, we'll start with verse 17. And uh, make sure I give you all time to get there. Or are you all looking at the, the board? I still, I, I'm still from the old school. I bring my Bible. You know, I, I, I couldn't keep up with anything with an iPad or a tablet or stuff because my fingers would hit the wrong thing and I'd be lost it. But the Bible, we're friends. Hallelujah. So here in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God. Ooh, glory be to God. I'm here to tell you God is going to do something special for somebody today. It's been rolling inside of me. I, I cannot get away from it. Expect it. You know, God deals with individuals. So it could happen to all of all of us are individual. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm not got my eyes caught to one side and say, well, I wonder if it's so nice. It's me. It's me. Hallelujah. I take it. Glory to God. It's mine. It's mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's start over again. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom we believe, even God, who quickeneth the dead. And call it those things which be not as though they were. <coughs> Excuse me. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. He was strong in faith, the stronghold of faith. Abraham was strong in faith. If you look at verse 3, Romans chapter 4, and verse 3, it says that, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted, it was counted unto him for righteousness. So here Paul, he's quoting from Genesis 15 and 6. He said, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. When God preached the gospel to Abraham, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. And here Paul is saying that he believed God, he's justified, he's righteous, and now we look at the scripture in Romans 4, 17. Oh, my goodness. It says here, let's look at it closely. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God who what? Quickeneth the dead. That means he made alive. Abraham's body was dead, and God made it alive. Quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Why is it so difficult for you to call things that be not as though they were? Why is it? People always say what they see. But if we're going to talk God's language, we're going to have to call things that be not as though they were. Glory be to God. We're going to have to start declaring some things that we don't see, we don't feel. There's no place in sight. We're going to have to start declaring some things. Glory to God. I remember when I was at the... Um, I was working at Bamsey, and, and I was just getting in, really learning about faith. And uh, I started, I was listening to a, a message by Jerry Savelle, and he was talking about God is doing a new thing. And I had listened to that message, and I, all that day I began to say, you know, God is doing a new thing for me. And I, 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 I was saying it to myself, but then I got, I got you know, it, I don't know if any of you all ever experienced this. The more you say something, the more bolder you get about it because it comes alive. It begins to grow inside you. Hey, it, it, it must happen. God got to do something. And so I was saying that all day, God is doing a new thing for me. And I walked up to the reception. I said, hey, God is doing a new thing. She said, I said, he's doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Glory to 
God. He's doing a new thing for me. I went all that day, came on that afternoon up in Live Oak. I don't know if you all ever been to that light that seems to stop everybody. You know that one that's right across. They got two lights there. One by the, the tide, that restaurant, and then you move up a little bit where you got a cross over the 1604, got another light. Well, I was at that light, and somebody just rolled into the boom in the back of me. And I, I've been confessing all day, God is doing a new thing for me. So my husband pulled up, and, um, and because by that time they called the police, and he's looking. And he couldn't believe that, it, but nothing happened to the car. No scratches, no nothing. Talking about doing a new thing. Glory to God, I got exactly what I said. You know, usually when you're sitting at a light and people roll into you, you get some kind of damage, but I didn't get nothing. Why? Because God did a new thing. Amen. And if you want God's blessings, you're going to have to keep saying it. You know, God spoke it. He spoke it from the beginning of time all the way to Jesus came. God spoke. He was speaking. Amen. You know, and Charles Capps said one time, he said, they asked the Lord, said, God, why did you say and let there be, and let, why did you say let there be one time? He said, I'm trying to get a message over to you. You have to keep saying it. And God said, and God said, let there be, and God said, let there be, and God said, let, he's God. He could have said it one time. Everything would have been there, but it's a format. It's a purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when you say things in line with the word of God, you're not being uh, 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 in doubt or unbelief. You are actually being in faith because you're going to see it. So God calleth those things that be not as though they were. And verse 18, who against hope believed in hope. You know, Abraham, he didn't have any hope. He was physically beyond hope. Because everything was dead. There was no way that he could produce anything. But because of what God said, who against hope believed in hope, that, it, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. When Abraham began to call himself Abraham, that means that he believed God and nobody could stop him. You know, uh, everybody worked, uh, Charles Capps used to say the whole county worked for Abraham. And so when this man rolled up and said, uh, uh, hello, how you doing? My name is Abraham. He said, you know, nobody dare laugh because he didn't have any children. And he's saying he's Abraham, the father of a multitude. You know, they understood names, you know. Amen. So what do your name mean? Don't tell me. Just find out. Amen. <laughs> Find out what your name means. And then live it out. And if you don't like what it means, change your name. Change your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people get the wrong name. They get the wrong name and they can walk throughout their lives. They live under a curse because they're under the wrong name. Amen. But make sure that your name is what you want it to be and it, it says the things that you want it to say. Amen. You know, and uh, I know that uh, people when they put in for citizenship, uh, when they come from a different country and they put in for citizenship, they get one chance to change their name. Because you, you wonder how some people have these nice names and they can't speak a bit of English. You know, how could you get a name like that when you can't speak no English? How did you get a name, Richard, when you can't speak no English? How did you get it? So when I didn't know this, not until he explained to me. So, you know, when I came through, I, I'm not going to talk the way he was talking because then you wouldn't understand it. But when he came through <laughs> to get his reply for citizenship, he had one time to change his name. He thought that, he said, nobody would never be able to pronounce my name. So I better change it to Richard. And so that's what he did. He changed it to Richard. So, you know, that's why you have a lot of people with the same name, you know. And, you know all right. And uh, so, and then my husband, he, he told the story. You heard him tell it many times that he was in basic training with a, a young man from the uh, uh, Asian young man. And, and they asked him, what did his last name was York? And they said, well, what do you want to change your name to, your first name? He said, New. New York. You know, if you're just entering into a country and you came in through New York, <laughs> you like that name, you can pronounce it. You can at least say new. So, so that's what he did. And then he's right there. He went through basic training. 
And so, so we hear Abraham, he's a father of a multitude. Hallelujah. So in 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. He didn't even consider. You say, well, hey, now God says he's going to do this. He didn't even consider his body now dead. He didn't even consider it. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now, this is something. He, his body is dead, and Sarah's womb is dead. She couldn't produce when she was 20. She, it, it, the scripture said it ceased for the manner of woman for Sarah. You know, God, he's a prayer answering God. Now, he could have stopped the Hebrew children from going into the fire furnace. But the miracle in the, in, the, in the glorification of God is greater when he delivered them out of the furnace. You see, if he would have stopped them from going in, it wouldn't have been a great a miracle, you know. And God wouldn't have received the glory that he got when they threw him in. Three of them. The men, the burly men, you know, the burly men where they won't miss. They got ready to hurl them into that fire, and that fire was so strong it leaped out. And burnt them. And here are the Hebrew boys, and the fourth one is in there with them. You know, and they're walking around like it's air conditioning. And here the king, he is so troubled, he run to see. And he said, now, now wait a minute, how many did we put in there? And they said, oh king, three. He said, I see four. And he began to count. One, two, three, four. And the fourth one, now how did he know? Look like unto the Son of God. How did he know it? They're not as dumb as they think they are. God will make the dumbest person on this earth recognize him and understand him if he needs to. So he said, the fourth one is like unto the Son of God. And they're walking around in it. And when they brought him out, they didn't have a smell of smoke on them. No, the hair wasn't sick. The hair wasn't sitting. Now, they heated the furnace up seven times hotter. The turbines didn't have any smoke smell. What did they do? They got promoted in the kingdom, and what did the king say? Everybody going to worship their God. Because if you can spare somebody out of that furnace, everybody is going to worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Hallelujah. consider the deadness of his, uh, the, his, his body dead or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was what? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. We need to read this. Oh, I have it here. Um, Abraham did not, let's see, where was I? The verse 20. No unbelief. In the Amplified, if you can get it up on the Amplified, they can read it in the Amplified. This is really good, verse 20. No unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly question concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. Oh, hallelujah! The man didn't doubt! He didn't even Abraham didn't have this book that we have. He didn't have all the, the tools that we have to watch, uh, to listen, to watch. Abraham, all he had was Jehovah. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Carol and Prescott, and this is my husband, Pastor Stephen Prescott. And we're pastors of Church of the Firstborn in the city of Church. We want to thank you for joining us today. And we want to ask you to continue to follow us on our website. And remember, have, have faith, faith in, in God. God.